Mastering is defined as the final stage in audio post-production in which a track is optimized for various systems and media platforms. There are a lot of different routes you can take while mastering, all depending on the purpose of your track and what platforms you're planning on releasing to. For example, if you're just posting a beat to YouTube, you'd probably not need to go through as many steps as if you were, let's say, releasing an album to Spotify and Apple Music. In today's video, I'm going to be going over three levels of mastering. Starting with basic and ending with advanced, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to have your music sounding exactly how you want it for wherever it ends up. Also, make sure to stick around till the end of the video for information on downloading a free stock mastering template that I made just for you guys. It's going to have all the basic tools that you need in order to have your beats sounding as clean and punchy as possible. With that said, let's get straight into the tutorial. Level 1 is all about simplicity and efficiency. I use this method when I'm making a simple beat and just want to get it done fast. All I'm looking for out of this master is hard hitting drums, nice clipping sound on the 808, and of course, appropriate loudness. All you're going to need on the master track is an EQ, Camel Crusher, and Soft Clipper. That's it. If you don't already have Camel Crusher, I've left a link for it in the description, it's free to download. Before you turn any of these plugins on, it's important that you leave headroom in your mix. What this means is basically the difference between zero decibels and wherever your mix is peaking. If you see by this beat right here, I'm going to play the mix, it's peaking around negative nine, somewhere up in between negative six, that's where it should be. It doesn't necessarily need to be in this exact range, this is just what I find to be the sweet spot. You can honestly have your mix peaking all the way up to negative three decibels if you really want, but that's the highest you can take it if you actually want a solid master. Once your beat is fully mixed and leveled out with headroom, you can turn on all the master effects. After this, you can hear a noticeable difference in how the beat sounds. Here's how it sounds without. And then when I turn all the master effects on. And keep in mind, this is without doing anything. This is just by turning on the effects. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention. Once you have all your plugins turned on, make sure that your Camel Crusher is set to the subtle master preset. By default, Camel Crusher is going to be on the Annihilate preset, and you really don't want to use this preset because... Let, you know, let me just show you. Yeah, you definitely don't want your master sounding like that. Anyways, after you've leveled your track, open the EQ and drag the high pass filter to about 23 to 25 hertz. The high pass filter is going to take out most of the unwanted and unnecessary low end frequencies. At this range, most studio monitors can't even produce sounds that low in frequency. So cutting them out at around the range of 23 to 25 hertz will most of the time only make your track sound cleaner. The fifth and final step of level 1 is to use the main level fader in the EQ to boost the master gain until it's barely clipping. For this track I ended up landing at around 10.5 dB. The most important part of this step is just to really critically listen and use your ears. You have to push the fader up ever so slightly so you get that spot where it's clipping but not distorting. Here's how it would sound like if you pushed it too high. And not enough. After I finished getting the level right, here's how the beat sounds. Level 2 is all about control and optimization. I use this method when the track I'm working on is a bit more complex, or if I just feel like I need to do a bit more in-depth master. This could be because of a few reasons. Most of the time, I use level 2 after I finish mastering with level 1 and feel like the track just doesn't sound as good as it should. Sometimes I skip level 1 entirely and go straight to level 2 because I just know that this method of mastering will work best for the scenario. Examples of scenarios where level 2 works better are tracks with many layers, tracks with a complicated low end, and full songs with vocals. I'm going to go a lot deeper into mastering songs with vocals once I get to level 3, so stay tuned for that. For level 2, what you're going to need on the master is an EQ, Maximus, Wave Shaper, and Soft Clipper. That's all. Just like last time, I'm going to open the EQ. The first thing I'm going to do is drag this high pass filter to about 23 to 25 hertz, just cutting out the unnecessary low end frequencies. After that, open Maximus. The purpose of Maximus in this scenario isn't to squash the hell out of your signal with compression, but rather to do some basic stereo imaging for each band while slightly tweaking the gain of each as necessary. After you like how each individual band sounds, 
you can go listen to the full signal and increase the master post gain until your beat sounds loud enough without distorting. I like to start off with low end just because it's the first in the chain. All you're going to need to do for the low end is make sure the compressor is off and then turn the whole signal mono by turning this knob all the way to the right. Keeping the low end in mono is standard practice in most all industry masters because, well, it just sounds better. Also, if your low end frequencies are too separated in the stereo field, this could cause intermittent phase cancellation or comb filtering, which is a big no-no, especially for the bass of your track. What I mean by this is when the low end is too wide, the sound waves, right and left, become out of phase, hence the name, phase cancellation. This could cause a bunch of problems, mainly a specific weird wonky sound that makes your track kind of sound like a plane landing. Another big problem being the fact that you probably won't be able to play your song on any sort of PA system if it has phase issues. So yeah, just keep your low end in mono and it should be good. For the mids, you don't really need to do that much. Just make sure the compressor is off and then turn this stereoized knob a little bit to the left. Unlike the low end, we want the mids to have a little bit more stereo presence. This is because a lot of consumer grade audio devices like phones, small speakers, small headphones, focus a lot on the mid range so you want it to be very present. The same goes for the high end, but I like to boost the stereo knob a little bit more just because high end frequencies have less presence in those consumer grade audio devices. You can also combat this by boosting the post gain knob. For this track, I landed around 3 decibels. Next, go to the saturation knob, turn the threshold up just a tiny bit until you think it sounds good. This is optional, but I just feel like a little bit of saturation fits well with the high end in most masters. Once you finish working on each individual band, go to master and then boost the post gain knob. After a little bit of listening, I found that 11.9 decibels worked best for this track. Just like the previous level, you're going to want to boost the gain as much as you can without the track distorting. After you've finished everything in Maximus, the last step is to open Fruity Wave Shaper, and then turn this tension threshold up to your liking just to add a little bit of warmth to your track. I only had to boost mine by about 6% and it's already sounding a lot better. Here's how it all sounds before the master effects and then I'm going to show after. Before I get into level 3, I want to give a big shout out to Isotope for making this video possible. Without them, I wouldn't have been able to show you guys the final level because it exclusively uses the plugin Ozone 9. Small disclaimer, um, while editing I saw that Isotope actually just released Ozone 10, which is basically the updated version of Ozone 9. Since Ozone 10 is the only version that's currently available on their website, I've left a link for it in the description. It has 3 new modules I don't go over in this video and it's somehow cheaper than Ozone 9 was. So yeah, go check out the link in the description, but for the purpose of this video, level 3 is still going to be demonstrated using Ozone 9. After playing around with the hundreds of functions this mastering plugin has to offer, I've sort of developed a system that expedites my workflow and allows me to essentially optimize my tracks for any audio device. In this level, I'm going to show you how to professionally shape the stereo field, balance the frequency response, and maximize the loudness of all of your tracks in a method that takes no more than 10 minutes to finish. With that being said, let's get straight into it. The first thing I do every time I open Ozone 9 is click on the Master Assistant and let the AI do its thing. Before you click Next, of course make sure your track is mixed and then also make sure you're playing the loudest portion of your track. For me, loudest is right about here in bar 17. Once the Assistant's done working, it's going to give you a rough starting point to begin your master. The AI basically listens to your track and determines roughly what the EQ curve should look like and approximately how loud your master should be. This lays out a good foundation for the next steps and makes the whole process a lot easier in my opinion. What you're going to need for the rest of the process is Imager, Low In Focus, Exciter, and Vintage Tape. I'm going to start off by going in Imager and making 4 bands. Next, solo the low end and make it completely mono by pushing this fader all the way down. Then turn up the stereo separation of every other band with the high end being the most wide. After this we can move on to low end focus. I like to put the cutoff anywhere in between 150Hz and 200Hz, but it's honestly up to you, it doesn't really matter that much. After I find a good frequency range, I generally just listen to my track and then boost the contrast and gain respectively until I find a good area. The key to this step is to use your ears. You might have to listen to the low end for a while to get the right spot, but it's just part of the process. Once I get to the exciter, I usually only like to make one band in the high end. You can move the cutoff to wherever you like, again it's just preference. If you go down here, you can see that there's a bunch of different modes to choose from. I always go with tape. Then adjust the amount and mix knobs to your liking. Just like last step, it's important to listen to the track while you're doing this to find the right range. This is what I ended up with after listening. After you're done with that, 
open vintage tape, and then turn the low emphasis down as well as the high emphasis. I just use these two to add a little bit of saturation, nothing too crazy. And that's basically it. You might have to turn your threshold down a little bit just because of the effects we added, but other than that, your track should be sounding a lot better now. Here's how it sounds before and after. As promised, the download link for the mastering templates are in the description below. In order to download them, the only thing that you have to do is join my Discord server. Why join my Discord server, you might ask? Well, joining a community like this is one of the best things you could do as a music producer in 2022. In my server, there are hundreds of active producers who are honestly some of the most talented individuals I know. Once you get in, you'll see that there are channels for beat battles, beat critiques, collabs, loops, and so on. I didn't want to make it so that in order to download the kit you have to subscribe or like the video because I just feel like that's unfair. Obviously, you could do both of these things right now if you did like the video, but my goal in making this isn't to get more numbers, it's to provide value to everyone who's taking the time out of their day to watch my content. Also, for those of you that are already in my Discord server, Beat Critiques are coming back. Yes, Beat Critiques are coming back. I know it's been almost a month since my last Beat Critique, but from now on, expect at least one each week. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.